Today I'm gonna to show you how to create two different versions of silhouettes in Photoshop. The first version will create a silhouette graphic and the second version will create a realistic looking silhouette of our photo. So let's get into Photoshop and get started. For the first example, we're gonna be creating our silhouette graphic, which is basically cutting out a person, making them black so then we can use them in a silhouette illustration or something like that. So the first thing we need to do is of course create a selection of our subject. The easiest way to do that is by selecting the quick selection tool by pressing W and then we'll make life easy for ourselves by clicking on our image layer. Now to make this selection look a little bit better, we'll click the drop down menu and go to cloud detailed result and click select subject. I just find that the cloud version does a little bit better of a job for selecting hair and around fingers and stuff. Although when there's small details such as in this photo where the fingers are relatively close together, you can see that the selection here missed a couple spots like so. Now luckily it's really easy to refine a selection. Still with the quick selection tool active, we can hold alt or option and that will subtract from our selection. So I'll use the bracket keys just to scale down my brush to a nice tiny size and now holding alt or option I can go and subtract from between the fingers like so. And Photoshop will automatically snap to those edges and it just makes life pretty easy. Now you can continue to go around your entire subject doing this, but if you ever run into issues with this tool, I wanna to show you one other option that I find is also helpful, which is quick masks. So if you press Q on your keyboard, everything that is red will not be included in your silhouette. So that means that we want to have no red highlights over top of our subject. To adjust these red highlights, we can just grab the brush tool by pressing B. We can then set our foreground color to black and then paint over the areas that we do not want to include in our silhouette. Now, if you have an editing tablet, this will make life a lot easier, but this is just a little bit more of an intuitive way of creating your selection. Now, you can go through your whole photo once again, just brushing over the areas that you don't want to include inside of your silhouette. And then once you're done, you could just press Q on your keyboard to switch back and your selection will be active. Now, before recording this video, I did already go through and make a selection, which I saved over here in the channels. So I'm just gonna reactivate that by holding Command or Control, clicking on that. And then now I have my selection good to go. Anyways, once you've gone through the selection process yourself, we're gonna add that selection onto a layer mask. With our image layer selected, I'll click on the layer mask icon. Now that removes the background from our subject. Now to make our subject a silhouette, we could create a color fill layer, but an easier way in this particular case is just by using layer styles. So double clicking on the layer styles, I'll go down here to the color overlay. And here I can set my color to black or whichever color you want your silhouette to be really, since this is a graphic. And then we can click okay, click okay again. And now we have that color applied. Turning that on and off, you can see the before and after obviously. Now, if I zoom in here, this is really important before you go and save this or use this in another illustration type project is around the edges there's a few areas that are not fully visible. As you can see there's partially transparent areas around her head. So clicking on her layer mask I'll grab my brush tool by pressing B and then with my foreground color set to white which means I'm adding visibility to my layer mask I'm gonna go and paint over those areas like so until all of those semi-transparent areas are filled in and we have a nice sharp edge for the outside of our silhouette. Now with our silhouette complete, we can grab our move tool and then move this into another project as we please. So that's how to create a graphic silhouette. Now let's go into our next example, which is turning our original photo into a more realistic looking silhouette where we can then move our subject anywhere on the beach as well. Now, before we get into that next step, if you've been enjoying this tutorial so far, make sure to hit that like button down below. And if you love using Photoshop, consider subscribing as well because I talk about it all the time on this channel. Anyways, into the next example. Now this time around, since we're creating a realistic silhouette, that means we need to darken our subject as if they're being backlit, so they're just totally shadowed. This also means that we'll need to darken the foreground as well to give it a more realistic look. Now the starting point of this is a little bit different. We need to first duplicate our layer by clicking on our image layer and then pressing Command or Control J to duplicate it. Now I'll call the top layer to person and I'll call the other layer to background. You'll see why in just a minute. Next, we need to create a selection once again. So just like last time, I'm gonna use the quick selection tool by pressing W. I'll go to cloud detail results, select subject, and then it will make an automatic selection. Then zoom in, make sure that everything is looking good. And to refine your selection, hold Alt or Option and then just paint over the areas that are not looking perfect. If you're unfamiliar with any of the selection processes in Photoshop, make sure to check out this video right here where I dive into four of the best tools for beginners. Now, once your selection is active, we need to once again, fill it with black, but this time we're gonna use a color fill layer so that we can use the opacity controls just within the layers panel. First, I'll go and create a layer mask to remove the background from that particular layer. It looks like nothing happened, but if I turn off the background layer, 
you can see the background is removed. Now I'm gonna add a new black color fill layer by going to layer, new fill layer, solid color. Click okay, and then set this to black. Click okay again. Now we'll right click on that color fill layer and go to create clipping mask. This will apply that color only to the visible areas of our person layer. So now we have a silhouette, but if I zoom in, you can see that there's some hair sticking out around behind our subject. And if I wanted to go and move my subject to a different place on the beach for a different composition, Obviously I couldn't do that because now I have a duplicate version of her. So what we can do is remove the subject from our background layer with a really easy method. And then that way we can freely adjust our composition before finalizing this effect. To do that, I need to first reactivate and expand my selection. By holding Command or Control, I'll click on my person layer mask, which will reactivate that selection for me, and so I don't have to do any work with the quick selection tool. From there, we need to expand the selection so that we can use content or fill to fill and remove the original person on the background layer. To expand our selection, we'll just go to Select, Modify, and Expand. I'll set this to 20 pixels and click OK. And notice how the selection edge is now 20 pixels outside of our initial selection. With that complete, I'm gonna click on my background layer, select my quick selection tool by pressing W, then right click within that selection and go to Content Aware Fill. Now I'm not gonna get into too many details about this tool here because I talk about it way more in depth in this video if you're interested. However, what this tool basically does is it takes all of these green areas and finds different samples that can then be used to replace the inside of your selection. Therefore, looking at our preview here, you can see that the subject is completely removed from the beach so I can easily move it around and change the composition. So with that, I'll click OK, and then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect that selection. Now turning off my person layer, you can see that my subject is now removed. However, if I zoom in, you can see that there's a couple little areas that were missed which is no problem. We can just grab the clone stamp tool by pressing S. Now we'll hold Alt or Option to sample nearby and then paint over the unwanted areas that might be left over, such as hair or an edge of a shoelace or something like that. Take a moment to quickly go through your photo and see if there's any little inconsistencies with the content or fill adjustment. Once you're happy with your clone stamp adjustments, turn back on your person layer, select it, and then grab the move tool by pressing V. Now you can reposition them anywhere within your image to suit your composition. But in this case, I need to be aware of her feet and the sand because they kind of need to match up, obviously. So I'm gonna go and place her somewhere like this. It looks realistic enough. And for the sake of a silhouette, she's nice and backlit, so the silhouette really makes sense here. Now, obviously things are not looking super realistic at this point, and that's because only our subject is darkened. So let's go and add some darkening adjustments to the beach so that it matches up with our silhouette. Clicking on my topmost layer, I'm going to click on my curves adjustment layer and then I'm going to decrease the darkness of the midtones like so and then maybe adjust the highlights as well bringing those down a touch. I'll also just bring down the shadows a touch as well for a little added contrast. Now obviously this is applying to my whole photo so I'll press command or control I with that layer mask selected to make that entire adjustment invisible. But now we'll grab our gradient tool by pressing G clicking on our gradient editor going to the basics folder and clicking the foreground to transparent gradient. I can make sure my foreground color is set to white with a linear gradient enabled and I can just click and drag up from the beach, holding shift to create a straight gradient. And now that will just darken the areas that we are painting over with a nice smooth gradient like so. From there, once your mask is adjusted, you can continue to adjust the curves adjustment layer to refine the look of your silhouette. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Turning that on and off, you can see that massive difference that this makes to blend everything together. Now, if you wanted to further enhance this effect and create it something slightly more realistic, you could also adjust the opacity of the color fill layer here to reveal some more details within your subject but I'm kind of happy with how this looks, so I'm gonna call this finished here. Let's take a look at that before and after. So those are two different ways to create silhouettes in Photoshop, but if you wanna take this one step further, definitely check out this video right here where I walk through the process of creating a silhouette illustration in Photoshop. It's a ton of fun to create, and I definitely recommend checking it out.